currently Royal Enfield offers two slightly different flavors for those who are seeking adventure in their lives. You get the icon, the Royal Enfield Himalayan and its younger sibling, the Scram 411, which as we found out at the end of our first ride should have been called the Himalayan Light. And the price difference between the two is just 11 to 13,000 rupees, depending on the color that you opt for. So the question is, is it wiser to save or spend that extra moolah? We have five distinct riding scenarios to help us reach our final verdict. But before we go ahead, welcome to Zig Wheels. I am Jehan and make sure you've hit that subscribe and bell notification icon. That's the Scram. Now Royal Enfield has made subtle tweaks to the Himalayan package to make it easier to live with on an everyday basis. For instance, when taking sharp turns or U-turns, the Scram doesn't feel as tedious as the Himalayan. It's light on its feet and is quite agile as well, masking its heft much better than the Himalayan. Now don't get me wrong, both bikes are still quite bulky and moving them around in the parking lot is cumbersome. But what helps matters on the Scram is its smaller turning circle radius. And in terms of outright performance, you cannot really feel the Scrambler to be the more zippier motorcycle than the Himalayan. In the 0 to 100 kmph acceleration run, the difference between the two is just 0.8 seconds and the two post near identical roll on acceleration times. So while it will feel the more flickable motorcycle, it doesn't back it up with performance improvements. Ooh, it's a bit neck and neck here and I would just edge it out to the Scram. Firstly because of the seat, it is long and spacious and the foam used is thick and firm which is ideal for spending long hours in the saddle. Also, Royal Enfield has improved the engine refinement of the 411cc mill. It no longer feels vibey at 100, 110 kmph and it can sustain these speeds quite effortlessly. There is a little bit of that mechanical noise that you'll have to deal with, but hey, gear shifts are far better than on the Himalayan. But since there is no wind protection offer like the Himalayan over here, you will feel a lot of wind resistance at highway speeds. But hey, that's fine as long as wind is blowing on your torso, especially since the Indian summers are finally here. Now, even though both bikes share the same engine tune, the lack of wind protection hurts the Scram's case greatly. It is almost 5 kmph less fuel efficient than the Himalayan in a highway test. However, its city zippiness helps it deliver a better score of 38.23 kmph. 6 kmph better than its adventure sibling. In isolation, the Scram feels quite nice when riding two up. The suspension doesn't wallow either with the added weight and that's boon while cornering. However, majority of the pillion riders will prefer the Himalayan because the seat is slightly longer, the foam used is more plush and if you're looking at touring, you can mount luggage on the tail rack and not have your partner carrying it on their shoulders. Oh, that's definitely the Scram because the steering isn't as lazy, direction changes don't require as much effort and they are quick and you can really push the bike hard into the corners. And even when you do so, you can carry a lot of speed and the bike remains quite composed. Unlike the Himalayan, which feels a little floaty. While the Himalayan is still the more serious and capable motorcycle of the two, which makes it the better off-roading motorcycle as well, the Scram's friendliness will favor newbie adventure thrill seekers. The tighter dimensions, shorter suspension, and relatively less curb weight when compared to the Himalayan make it less daunting for those who are taking their first steps in adventure riding. Now, both motorcycles are equally forgiving, but I wish Royal Enfield gave the Scram switchable ABS. This aid being present on the Himalayan, and it makes no sense why they skimped on it for the Scram. Now, there is a workaround of this issue by simply removing the rear wheel ABS sensor when you're going off-roading. And once you're done with your dirty dancing, you can just simply plug the sensor back in. Now, what this will allow you to do is it will allow the front end to have ABS. So even if you go a little bit too enthusiastic with the front end, the front end will not lock up and wash out in front of you, while also allowing you the chance to stamp on the rear brake and bring the bike to a grinding halt. So, save or spend? Well, how about both? Confused, right? Well, what we would ideally do is we would save and get the Scram 
and from the money that we save that is around 11 or 12000 rupees we would get the triple pod which is around 5000 rupees uh get this wider accessories bar from the GMA catalog that's around 3 and a half thousand rupees and then get some luggage mounting solution which should also be around 3 and a half four thousand rupees and if my maths is right you come up to that same 11 or 12 thousand rupees so you are spending that much more but by doing that you're making the scrap a great old rounding machine heck that's what we would do what would you do let us know your thoughts in the comments below don't forget to hit the like share and subscribe buttons also stay notified to zig wheels because the next video featuring this grand is going to be a spicy one <laughs>